So let's start the hands-on. There are different ways we can start the hands-on. Um, you can start from the homework um, screen that you currently got. You can start a new CubeMX project inside your Cube IDE. Or in the case of mine, I'm going to start a brand new example in CubeMX itself. So, so I'm going to start this way. Um, you can do whichever of those other two ways is best suited for you. But if you want to start on the full CubeMX, then please do and you can follow along with me. Or as I say, you can start a new project inside the Cube IDE. So I first of all need to go and select our device. I will access the MCU selector. And the device we have on our nucleo board is the STM32U575ZIT6Q. It's the device that's on our board. So it's narrowed my list down to one. Highlight that item. It's a great section there where you can go and get data sheets and have a look at the features of the device. Uh, and we're going to start the project. So if you're doing this within the Cube IDE, um, you have to go into File, Start New STM32 Project. Um, or you can just sit and wait at the homework screen and we're going to add on to what you've done in that homework screen. So there are the two options. Um, because we're not focusing on security today, so we're going to do it without Trust Zone activated. So I'll say OK to that. And it's now going to go and build my new project. There we go. So hopefully everybody should be at a pinout screen now. If you've done it in the Cube IDE, I think you've got to name it first and select those um, a couple of parameters that you saw Anders doing the homework. And once we're at the pinout screen, our first step will be to select the um, analog pins. So, so we're going to select the um, ADC features. So I will expand analog. I will select ADC number one. And we need to enable channels one, two, three, and four to be single ended. Channel one, channel two. Channel three, channel four. So that should have all put pins on PC zero to PC three on your pinout diagram. And that is your ADC pins uh, assigned onto the chip. Now we need to set some parameters for our ADC. I'll readjust my screen size so we can see more of the parameters. So we want to be in continuous conversion mode. So we need to enable continuous conversion mode. We want to enable low power weight, power auto weight, oops. Yep. So this will help us um, preventing any uh, overruns. And in the regular conversion mode, we want to enable regular conversions. So we're not going to use the injected uh, conversion mode. We're just going to use regular conversion mode for this example. So 
The next feature we need to enable is in the conversion data management. And in here, we want to make sure we're connecting the ADC to the DMA. Um, and we're going to use DMA circular mode. So that's going to provide all the relevant requests in hardware between the ADC cell and the DMA cell um, inside the, uh, the device. So the number of conversions we're doing is going to be four. So we've assigned four pins here on our pinout diagram. So we need to change the number of conversions in our regular conversion mode to be four. And now we need to give the rank of each of these channels so that we know exactly what order we've got. So if I expand rank, there we go. So the channel that's going to be first in the list is going to be channel one. That's correct. Uh, the item that's second in the list is going to be channel two. Rank two will be channel two. Rank three will be channel three. And rank four will be channel four. So if you had a particular order that you wanted to do, depending on how your hardware was wired, you've got the ability to control exactly which order all your ADCs are being serviced by the A to D converter. So that's all we need to do for the ADC side. So now we need to go and start configuring our GPDMA. So the GPDMA is a system peripheral, or you can find it if you've changed to categories, as Anders showed. Um, so it's a system peripheral. So it's GPDMA. And we are going to use channel 15. And we're going to select this to be linked list mode. So now you can see all the different elements that make up the um, DMA configuration. So we want to have a look at specifically channel 15's configuration now. And we want to set the execution mode to match our ADC. So we need that execution mode to be circular as well, so that it's matching our ADC mode. And now we need to create our linked list. So linked list is hidden down in utilities. If you're still in categories. And we open our linked list. And by default, there's nothing in the list, so we need to add a list. And we now need to set some details for our queue. So we need to highlight our queue name. And again, as we did with the DMA part, we need to change our queue so that it is a circular queue. Change that from linear to circular. And so that we know where the first loop is, we need to give the, the name. So if I go back to my cheat sheet, and I'm currently on page 14. I could have typed it, uh, your node name, so I'll do the uh, copy code. And our node is there, I can paste, so it's your node name. So the first node in the loop is what we've just um, 
declared there in the uh, code. So this is where our linked list is going to start from. So this is pointing the queue so it knows exactly where the first element of our linked list is located. This is also where our last node is going to loop back to. So we said we're in circular mode. So when we hit the last load of our queue, then it jumps back to also back to this first node name as well. This is uh, what we've just um, detailed there inside the Cubamex. So, so the last node exactly knows where to go for the first node and the software when it starts up knows exactly where to go for the first node. So now we set the queue up and set the starting point and the loopback point to. So we can now go into our particular node. So we actually want to configure what our node is going to do. Uh, and in this case, it's going to control our ADC. So our request configuration is going to be linked to our ADC number one. Then we have to set, as in our standard DMA parameters, we need to set a source and destination details. So we will start with our destination um, details. So we're going to increment our destination address after each transfer, because we're going to fill our RAM buffer up. And ADC number one, if I remember correctly, is our 14 bit ADC. So we need our data width to be set to half word. And in our source data setting, we also need to change our data width to be half word because our 14 bit address of our ADC. Now we need to give our memory locations some names so our source address is our adc data register so i shall copy that and our source address is our adc data register here in the runtime configuration right at the bottom. Make sure you delete the zero that's in there. My highlight didn't pick that up. Our destination address is our RAM buffer, which is going to be called data. And our size of our uh, RAM buffer is going to be 64 times 2. So that's now set the configurations up for the DMA. So we've got a source address, which is our data register, which is set for half words. We've got our destination address, which is going to increment. Uh, so we fill our RAM buffer of data, which is also half words. And we are going to have 64 um, items loading into our RAM buffer of half words. So, so that's our data size sat in there. So now we need to generate the code. So if you've started from the homework or the cube IDE, you've already created a project name. Uh, because I started a brand new project here, I now need to go into the project manager and give my project a name to so call it GP DMA. Uh, I think I've already got a zero, so I think I'm going to have to call it GP DMA number one. 
And as we highlighted earlier, uh, I think it was Crystal's highlighting it for the ecosystem. If you're using the Cubamex as standalone, you've got the option now to select which tool chain you're using. So I'm going to select the Cube IDE. And that's all I have to do. I don't have to change any other project settings. Um, my project location is correct. It's the default one that I have, which is workspace and workshop. So I've named the project. I've given my project a location. I've set the correct IDE. I can now click on generate code. And I'm getting the warnings uh, that Anders saw earlier on. I'm going to say no to that at the moment so that I don't have these keep popping up uh, during the rest of my hands on. So I'm going to quickly go to chapter zero of my cheat sheet. And I need to set the iCache to be one way mode. I shall go back to my pinout. Go all the way up to system and I cache. I shall put that into one way mode. And the second pop up is to do with the power supply. So I need to go into the power peripheral and switch my power regulator to be switch mode power supply. So if I go there into power, power. I now need to switch that one to be switch mode power supply. OK, so that'll just get rid of those annoying pop ups that we've uh, seen there. So now if I generate code, it should go off and generate code without warning me that I've not set two parameters. OK, so it's finished creating all my files. So I'm now going to open project. So this is now opening the cube IDE. And as you saw with Anders this morning, it's wanting me to confirm a workspace. So that's correct. I shall launch my workspace. My cube IDE is now opened. 